chapter 3 and verse 17. Colossians chapter 3 verse 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Give a thank to the Most High Power and the Father by Him. So everything we do in word and deed, we do all by Hashem and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. Give a thanks to the Father, right? So this is the weekend of y'all so called Halloween, right? Well, guess what? Every day on, on, on pretty much every weekend is Halloween on Hollywood and Highland, right? So nothing's pretty much changed. But let's uh let's go to the book of Second Ezra, chapter three, and we'll start at verse one. Read that, brother. Second Ezra, chapter three, and verse one. In the thirtieth year after the ruin of the city, I was in Babylon and laid trouble upon my bed. So you see that Ezra was in Babylon. Babylon is the place of confusion. Because y'all are confused about what day it is. Today is not a day for y'all to be buying and to be selling, right? So Ezra was also in Babylon, right? Next week y'all gonna start uh, 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 getting ready to dress up, grown men, grown women, putting on costumes, right? Being Aladdin, uh, uh, being Black Panther, you know, being uh, who, who, whoever you wanna be, right? Uh, these celebrities, Nicki Minaj, Michael Jackson, or whoever it may be, right? So Ezra, a man being a woman, a man being a woman we're definitely gonna get into that, right? Because Babylon is the place of confusion, where you're confused on your identity. You're confused on your gender. You're confused on who you should be sleeping with, right? Read that from the top again, brother. Second Ezra, chapter three, verse one. In the 30th year after the ruin of the city, I was in Babylon and laid trouble upon my bed. So you see that Ezra, he was heavy in the heart, right? Because he see his people, the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans being under confusion. So Ezra had to do something about it. Ezra had hit them streets to wake up the lost uh, sheep of the tribes of Israel, right? Read on. And my thoughts came up over my heart, for I saw the desolation of Zion. So you see that? We see the desolation of Zion. Who is Zion? Hold that, brother. Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 14 so we can see who Zion is. Right, because the children of Israel are laying desolate, meaning destroyed, right? Destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. What's going on, brother? You know your nationality? What is it? I got it. Right, so Ezra, he pretty much seen the destruction of the Israelites. Let's see who Zion is. Isaiah chapter 60, verse 14. The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto thee. And all that they despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee the city of the Most High, the Zion, the holy city of Israel. So you see that? Zion is Israel. Jump back over to 2nd uh, Ezra chapter 3 and verse, uh, you, verse 2. 2nd Ezra chapter 3 and verse 2. Right, so Zion is you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. You are Zion, right? For I saw desolation of Zion and the wealth of them that dwelt at Babylon. So you see that Ezra saw the wealth, which is these other, he these other heathen nations, right? And he seen the desolation of his people, right? Because guess what? The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man and woman is the last hire and the first fire. So you are destroyed. All you're doing is pretty much building up the heathen's kingdom. Building up the kingdom of America, right? The kingdom of Babylon. Read on. And my spirit was sore moved, so that I began to speak words full of fear to the Most High. And that's what we're doing. We're preaching in Babylon words full of fear, so you can know the fear the Most High, which you so-called Israelites don't do today. Yahshua Allah does not fear the Most High. Does not fear the words of the Most High, right? Read on. It said, O Most High will bear his rule. Thou spakest at the beginning, but thou didst 
fire the earth, and that thyself alone and commandest the people, and gavest a body unto Adam without a soul, which was the workmanship of thine head, and didst breathe into him the breath of life. So you see that? The breath of life was breathed into Adam, right? Which is the, which goes down to the Israelites. We're giving you the breath of life, right? You guys see yourself on that sign at all? What's your nationality? What's that? Give me um, additions to Esther chapter 10 and verse 9. Listen to this real quick. Additions to Esther chapter 10 and verse 9. Listen to this, brothers and sisters. This is to Esther chapter 10 and verse 9. And my nation is this Israel. So you see that? Your nation is Israel, right? Read on. Which cried to the Most High and were saved. You see that? The Israelites, we're supposed to cry to the Most High and are saved. Do you know what we need to be crying to the Most High about? Forgiveness of our sins. Right, right. So now, do you guys know what sin is? What sin? Let's see what the Bible says sin is. Right, because is sin like um, throwing a rock at you? Is that sin? Right? Right, so that's not sin. Let's see what the Bible says sin is. First John chapter 3, verse 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So you see that sin is actually the transgression of the law. Now, do you guys know any laws at all that we transgress? Do you know what today is? What's today? Give me Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Let's show y'all what today is. So this is actually a law that we must go, um, we must uh, obey, obey the Bible. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. No, forget the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we're supposed to remember the Sabbath day. Today is the Sabbath. How do you say Sabbath in uh, our seven day in Spanish? Shabbat. See that? The heathen got it. Right? Today is the Shabbat, the seventh day. So we're supposed to actually keep it holy, right? What are we supposed to do? Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Most High thy power. In it thou shalt do not any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy man servant, nor thy maid servant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. So today is the Sabbath day. We're not supposed to be doing no work, no labor, no buying, no selling, right? Um, uh, give me uh, Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 2. Let's get back to Babylon, the land of confusion. Where we are confused on what we should be actually doing right now. We're, supp we're supposed to be... Uh, worshiping and honoring the Most High, right? But instead we're walking up and down, to and from, dressed like ghouls and goblins, right? Witches and warlocks, right? Read that. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse two. Thus saith the Most High, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. You see that? We are commanded to learn not the way of the heathen, right? And we're not supposed to be dismayed at the signs of the heathen, right? So when the heathen says it's Halloween and you're supposed to put on a costume, we're not supposed to do it, right? Because we're not supposed to learn the ways of the heathen, right? Give me the book of Revelation chapter 11 and verse 8. Revelation and verse 8. Revelation verse uh, 11 and 8. Revelation chapter 11 verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. Right, you see that? The dead bodies of the Israelites are going to lie in the city of Babylon, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. Now, what is Sodom and Egypt known for? Do you know what Sodom is known for? Right, right. That's what Sodom, he said it. That's what Sodom is actually known for, right? Which is confusion. Man on man, it's confusion. Women on woman, which is confusion. That's what Sodom and Egypt is known for, right? Read on. Where also our power was crucified, and they of the people and kindreds and tongues 
and nations shall see their dead bodies three days. You see that? Uh, give me the book of Micah chapter 4 and verse 10. Right, because we're talking about Babylon. Babylon means confusion. America is mystery Babylon that's spoken about in the Holy Scriptures. Have you ever heard that before, brothers? What's your nationality? If you don't mind me asking, because we're confused. You don't have one. I got a flag. You don't got a, oh, okay, we don't got a flag, right? So do you know what the, uh, what does the Most High actually call you? What does the Most High say your nationality is? African American. Give me uh, uh, Isaiah chapter uh, 65 and verse uh, 15. Check this out, brother. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. You see that? We shall leave our name for a curse. So African American, that's a curse, right? Read on. Unto my chosen, for the most high power shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name. So you see that we're being called by another name. African American. Um, Psalms 49 and 11. So we're being called by another name, right? These are the names that are our forefathers. African American is actually the name of two white people, Leo Sibios Africanus and America Vespucci. These are the our God given names. Read this. Psalms chapter 49, verse 11. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own name. They called their name, their lands after their own names, right? So Africa, it wasn't really called Africa. That was actually the land of Ham, which is the Africans, right? America, this is not, uh, this wasn't America, it's called Asherah in the Bible, right? So we have to actually come back to who we are as a people. Give me the book of Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse four. Because we should be walking up and down and wondering who we are as a people. You know, if you would ask the so-called white man where he's from or who he is, he said, I'm Irish, I'm Italian. He has a long, extensive history of who he is, right? Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 4 And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee and I will cause thee to serve thine enemy in the land which thou knowest not for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger but shall burn forever so the most high says that we made him man and this is why he took away our identity of who we are do you know what we did to make the most high angry we broke his law statutes and commandments same way if you made your father mad, he would uh, punish you. That's what the Most High is doing to us. He's now punishing us, right? Now, do you know how we need to, how we can get back on the Most High's uh, better side? We, do, we need to do the opposite. Reverse it. Keep his commandments. Do you know any commandments, brother? Well, there's the Ten Commandments, right? But there's also over 613 commandments, right? Let me ask you this. Do you eat like pork? What about shrimp, crab, lobster? Okay, now if I, if I said today, I'm going to give you $20 million if you stop eating shrimp, crab, or lobster, would you do that? you stop doing it, right? But well, what about if the Most High said, I'll get, um, we'll get eternity if you stop eating, um, life eternity if you stop eating it. Okay, give me uh, the book of Leviticus, chapter 11 and verse 9. Let's see what the Most High said about shrimp, crab, and lobster. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. These shall ye eat all that are in the waters. Whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So what can we eat that comes out of the water? Fins and scales, right? So can we eat stuff like uh, catfish? Right. So it doesn't have scales. What about a sea urchin? Right. Why, why not? Right. So you think this day you can stop eating get uh, catfish, shrimp, crab, lobster for the most high? Because that's the bottom feeders. It keeps the ocean clean, right? The same thing with, with pork. That's the garbage can of the earth. You know, so the slot was, give, uh, was given to the slave, right? And we call it a delicacy. We eat things like scrapple, hog maw, chitlins. I'm from down south. They eat things like uh, pig brain and grits from Detroit. So you know about it, brother. And we supposed to be that stuff because we are our holy people, right? Give me the book of Leviticus chapter 22 and verse uh, 31. We're not supposed to be eating that type of stuff because we are holy people. Read that. Leviticus chapter 22, verse 31. Therefore shall ye keep my commandments and do them. I am the most high. You see that? So we got to keep the most high's commandments and actually do them. So you say you can actually stop eating shrimp, crab, and lobster, right? So um, you see these things on the bottom of our shirts right here? The bottom of the elder shirt? Do you know what this stuff is? What this is? Okay. Let me show you what this is actually. 
chapter 15 verse 38 speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make the fringes in the borders of their garments so these are fringes, right? Right. throughout their generation and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue and it shall be unto you for a friend that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the most high and do them so you ever heard of uh, forget me not so these are forget me not to help us remember the commandments. So just when you about to uh, think about sleeping with your brother's wife and stuff like that, start to pull up that shirt, and you see your fringes. They're like, oh, I can't do that. Or just when you're about to start uh, to buy and sell on a Sabbath day, you put your hand in your pocket for your wallet, you see your fringes. It reminds you to keep the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. All right? So um, you learned two commandments so far. What's the, what's the first one you learned? Grab a lobster, right? And you learn about what, what are these called? Right, to keep oh, the commandments. Now. Now, I see you have tattoos. I have tattoos as well, right? Do you know there's a law about tattoos? Do you plan on not getting any more tattoos? You're not getting no more? She told you that? Okay, so why do you listen to your grandma? Huh? Right, right. All right, right. My grandma too. We'll just be a hard hitter, right? So um, let me ask you this. Do you like a smoke or anything like that? That's good. I'll praise you to the most high. So what we are here doing, we're pretty much waking up the 12 tribes in Israel, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native American in these last days, that we are the Israelites. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 46. Because we're right now, we're cursed as a people. And we're cursed for breaking this uh, commandment. Check this out right here. chapter 5 verse 7 and his brethren by their families when the genealogy of their generations was breaking were the chief Geo and Zechariah you see that so we are a generation of people and we're reckoned by our forefathers right give me the book of Numbers chapter 1 and verse 18 
right? Because our lineage is actually found through who our father is. So if your father will be a so-called uh, Mexican, then it goes on through that. It's not, it doesn't go through your mother. It goes through who your father is. Check this out. Numbers chapter 1, verse 18. And they assemble all the congregation together on the first day of the second month. And they declared their pedigrees after their families by the house of their fathers. You see that? So your pedigree is determined by your father's lineage, right? So if you want to, if you got a pit bull, and that's the champion pit bull, right? Their pedigree, their bloodline is all champion pit bulls, right? So you're actually uh, one of the most high chosen people, right? Give me Deuteronomy 7 and 6. So check this out, brother. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Most High thy power. The Most High thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So you are special people above all people that are on the face of the earth, right? So the Most High gave the special people commandments, right? Do you eat Al Pastor? You do eat Al Pastor. Give me Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. So if I gave you 10 million dollars right today and say no more al pastor would you stop doing it you don't know for 10 million dollars hey brother if i give you 10 million dollars and said no more eating pork chop would you stop doing it you'll do it right no question so 10 million dollars 20 million okay what about the most high said stop eating al pastor what about the most high said stop eating pork chop and pepperoni would y'all do that for the kingdom i right, read that Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7. And the swine. And the swine, El Pastor, right? Pork. Uh, uh, what, what else y'all call it? Scrapple. Right? Go ahead. Though he divided the hood and cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. So the pig, El Pastor, is an unclean animal. Would you go inside of that trash can and pick out the bottom, the, the, um, the banana at the bottom of that trash can and eat it? Probably not, right? That's what the pig does. The pig cleans the uh, earth, right? A pig will actually eat a dead body. If you want to get rid of a dead body, <laughs> get throw it inside of a pig's pen, and it will eat it, right? Read on. Of their flesh shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. So you see that? The pork, the pig, El Pastor is an unclean animal. You can't eat it no more. So you think you can stop eating that pig? Yeah, right, right, you can do that. It's, it's easy, I mean, you can substitute it. You got things like turkey bacon, you know, you got beef, you got lamb, you got all these other clean animals other than the, um, the pig, right, that you can eat, right? So you said you're gonna stop eating pig. Give me the book of uh, Leviticus chapter 19 and verse uh, 20, uh, verse 17. So have you ever been to Mexico before? Been, how are we living in Mexico? I said, how are we living in Mexico? Are we living good? Are we living in mansions in Mexico? Poverty, right? Okay, let me show you this real quick. Read that. Yes. Uh, Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. So it's a commandment that we do not hate our brothers in our heart, right? In Mexico, you have what you call cartel crime, right? And here in America, you got black on black crime, right? The Bible commands us not to hate our brothers in our heart. If we were to stop hating each other, that would do away with all cartels. It would do away with the Crips and the blood. It would do away with all that type of stuff. Read on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor, and suffer not sin upon him. Right. So in other wise, we're supposed to do is correct our neighbors, right? And when you see a neighbor about to go into sin, it won't fall into that sin because you corrected him. So that gets rid of that crime, right? So do you think you can tell your family members in Mexico to stop uh, hating one another? Do you think you can stop hating your brothers? All right, well, it starts with yourself. All right, you have to show that brotherly love because you believe in the Biblios, right? You believe the words come out of it, right? So each one teach one. That used to be the same back in the, uh, the 80s and 90s. Each one teach one. So you teach your brothers. You start with yourself. Showing up others as being a good example, right? So um, let me show you one more real quick. Do you know who this man is right here? Now, does the 
Bible say Jesus Christ looks like this? Okay, give me the, uh, let me show you what Christ actually looks like. Because up here we're about stumping out idols, right? Give me the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Do you know what Revelation means? Right, it means the revealing, right? Right, read that. Revelations 1 and verse 1. The revelation of Hamashiach Yahushua. So it says the revelation of Jesus Christ. We call him Hamashiach Yahushua in the Paleo-Hebrew, right? Jump down to verse uh, 13. Verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So Christ had a long garment on down to his foot, right? Read on. And girt about the paths with a, garden, with a golden girdle. A war belt on, on him, right? I'll protect his midsection. Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool. So it says Christ's head and his hairs were white like wool. Now, does this man have white or woolly hair? It was white in color and woolly in texture. So if you look at this picture right here, that would be more of a depiction of what his hair color, his hair texture, and his color would have looked like, right? So, have you ever played baseball before? No baseball? Well, in California, you got three strikes you're out, right? So this will be strike one for this guy right here, right? If he doesn't have white or woolly hair, right? Read on. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were a flame of fire. So he had fiery red eyes, right? Do you know why Christ had red eyes? It's for a couple of reasons, but do you know one reason why he had fiery red eyes? So his first miracle was turning water into wine, right? And he's also, when he comes back, he sees the oppression of his, his, uh, his chosen people who are Israel. We're his chosen people. We see the pain that we go through, the suffering, the poverty, how we live in Mexico, right? So he has red eyes because he's experienced. Christ is not coming back to give out hugs. That guy is coming out to give out hugs, have all the little children of the world sit on his lap and everything, right? This is not him, but this is a depiction of what he might look like, right, when he returns, according to the Bible. Read on. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So his feet were like unto fine brass, right? Do you know what, uh, what, what color brass is? Brown is right, but it says how brown it was. Read that how brown it was. And his feet, like, like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. So his feet was very, very dark. So Christ would have been a very, very dark-skinned, so-called black man. Kind of like Wesley Snipes, right? He would have been that complexion. So, according to the Bible, this would not be Christ. So do you know what this is? It's the devil. Do you think you can step out, step on the devil? Step on him. No, no little tap, no little tap. Step on him, step on him. That's the devil that the Bible speaks of right there. So this is the first steps to repentance. It's getting rid of this false image right here. Who wants to win $100 and come challenge the Israelites to find this man in the Bible? Any takers? 100 bucks. Matter of fact, you say you'll do it, come on up. You see that man? This is the devil that the Bible speaks of, right? So, that's another commandment that we have, can't have no false idols. Give me uh, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 10. Because we got to believe on um, Hamashiach Kawashai, who the world calls Jesus Christ, as the scripture that tells us to believe in him, right? 1 John chapter 5 and verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of the Most High hath, wit hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not the Most High hath made him a liar because he believed in not the record that the Most High gave of his son. See that, so the Bible is a record. And it's a record of the Israelites, the Most High's chosen people, right? So I know we went over a few things so far. Do you have uh, any questions at all? Not at all? Tell me some things you learned so far. Right? What can you not eat? Swine. Do you eat shrimp, crab, and lobster? Not usually. Okay, I need it for you to not eat it no more as of today. Give me Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 9, because you say you, can, you don't you can't eat no more pork, right? You say you're going to stop doing that for the most high. Let's see 
if you can stop eating shrimp, crab, and lobster. And your sister's on the corner. Sister's on the corner. Do y'all eat crab? You do? Do you like kind of break it open and dump it in some obey and some butter sauce? Come on up here, sister. Talk to your brother. Read that, brother. Listen to this, sister. Leviticus chapter 11, verse 9. These shall ye eat that are all in the water. So, sister, this is what you can eat that is in the water, right? Listen to this. Whatsoever hath fin and scales. So, does crab have fins and scales? It does. It has a hard shell. And you got to actually crack open that shell and suck out the meat out of its own body, right? Who said that crab is a fool? Who told you that's something that you can eat? I'm going to tell you who told you that's something you eat. The devil that the Bible speaks of. Right? That man that's turning red right beside you. That's turning the color, the color of a lobster. He told you that that's okay to eat. Read on. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. So can you eat crab, brother? What about shrimp? What about, sister, what about if you cut out that little uh, poop shoot, right? And you put it on the fry pan. Can you eat that? Silence, right? So we can't eat that. Do you love the Most High? Right? Give me uh, St. John chapter 14 and verse 15. So sister, I'm um, with the dreads. If you love the Most High, let's see what um, he said you would do. St. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If ye love me, keep my commandments. So if you love the Most High, you're going to keep his commandments, right? Give me the book, uh, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 2 and verse 16. So if you love the Most High, so you, can you stop eating that shrimp, crab, and lobster? Right, so you can eat stuff with fins and scales. You can eat stuff like salmon, you can eat stuff like tuna, sea bass, trout, flounder, whitey. All these are clean fishes that you can eat because you love the most high. Read that. Listen to this real quick. Ecclesiasticus chapter 2 verse 16. They that fear the Most High will seek that which is well. You see that? If you fear the Most High, you're going to seek that which is well. Right now, you're learning about what is the good thing, the right thing to do. You're seeking what's well, how you please the Most High. Because we are living in, in the last days right here. You see wars. You hear rumors of wars. You see Russia with Ukraine. Uh, the Israelis against Hamas. Right? So you should be seeking what is well in these last days. Read on. They that fear the Most High will seek that which is well, pleasing unto Him. And they that love Him shall be filled with the law. You see that if you love the Most High, you're going to learn these laws. The laws are found in the, what they call the, uh, the Torah, which means law. Right? So from the books of Genesis to Deuteronomy is the law. Also, what you see in the red letter, that's also law as well, right? Because we're living in, in Babylon. This is a place of confusion. Give me the book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. So Babylon means confusion. We are living in Babylon the Great. Check this out. Micah chapter 4 verse 10. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. So go into where? Babylon. We are in Babylon. Babylon means confusion, right? And what's more confused than this place? Let me ask you this, what's your pronoun? You see that? Give me the book of St. Matthew chapter 19 and verse four. Hey, what's your pronoun? What's your pronoun? He, she, it, they, they, there, we. What's your pronoun? She, right, okay. Let's see what the Bible says, what your pronoun is supposed to be, your gender is supposed to be. Read that. Listen to, listen to this. St. Matthew 19. St. Matthew chapter 19, verse 4. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? No, made them cisgender. Male and female? No, made them he, she. Male and female? What did the Most High make us? Male and female, it's that simple, right? But we live in Babylon, which is a place of confusion, right? People don't even know their sexuality, right? 
Yeah. People don't even know that's that challenge. You gotta go. Yes. Uh, okay. That's what you get. Can you get the brother flyer? Can you get the brother flyer? He's gonna get you a flyer. All right, so you'll be an Israelite, brother. Check that flyer out. Um, I'll log on to our YouTube page, like, share, and everybody, all, all that good stuff right there, right? So you see that? We live in Babylon, the place of confusion, right? Where people don't even know their gender, right? Let me actually pull y'all up the genders that Babylon um, tells us we are. So check this out right here, right? Babylon tells us that there are 72 different genders. Let's see what they are. All right, so we're gonna read a couple of these, brother. Read the first gender that it says. A gender, a person who does not identify themselves with or experience any gender. A gender people are also called no gender. So how, we just read in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 19 and verse four, that the Most High made male and female. But it says you don't identify Again, we live in Babylon, right? A place that says you can be whatever you want to be. You can freak off. You can have sex with you, whoever you want to have sex with, right? Read the next one. A female gender associated with being profound, deep, and infinite. You see that? Another gender is called a female gender. We're reading the 72 genders that Babylon the great says you can be. Babylon, which means confusion, says you can be a, you can be a he, she, it, they, a, a gender, a female gender. Let's see what else we got over here. We're reading about the genders. Read this um, Alexa gender. Let's see what an Alexa gender is. Alexa gender. A person has a fluid gender identity between more than one type of gender. It says you have a fluid gender, right? to be gender fluid. Don't that sound nasty? Gender fluid? What is gender fluid? It sounds like something creepy and nasty and disgusting that you don't want on you, right? But Babylon says you can be a fluid gender, right? But Hamashiach Yahweh who the world calls Jesus Christ, said he made male and female. He didn't make all these genders, all these pronouns. But we live in Babylon the Great. But we're confused on who we should be. Let's, let's get a couple more. Again, we're reading from the 72 genders that America says you can be. You can be whatever you want to be. Read that, brother, uh, number six. Check this out, notice. In general, a person desires to be without any primary sexual characteristics. So it's a person that desires to be without any primary uh, sexual uh, uh, body parts. So you don't know what they got, right? But this is what the Babylon tells us we can be. We can be whatever we want to be. You can freak off. What happened to the old days? When you a boy is a boy, a boy does boy things. You know, he plays baseball, he may get into a fist fight, he may uh, uh, play football on, on the concrete, right? Girls do girls things. They wear dresses, they're sugar and spice and everything nice. Right? What happened to those days, right? Now we got stuff called agent, gender fluid, right? Let's see. Let's get a couple more. Read out right there, number 21. Check this out. Alpha gender. A person has apathy or a lack of feelings towards one's gender identity. So you got a you got a problem with what your gender is. Alpha gender. I Meaning you got an issue with it. You don't want to be what the Most High says you are. That you're going to be right. Just give me one more. Just choose anyone. Right? Because we're talking about Babylon, the place of great confusion. Give me a go. that is between the two extremes of a gender and any other type of gender. Both the genders are experienced one at a time without any overlapping. You see that, how can you be two genders at the same time? That's impossible. That's what you call madness. You cannot be two genders at the same exact time, right? So um, yeah, that's just a list of the 72 different genders that the world says that we are. 
Thank you, brother and sister. Y'all will be Israelites according to the Bible. So, another problem that um, America says that we have is sexuality. You can pretty much uh, be, with, be with or whoever you want to be with. You got what you call the, uh, the alphabet group. The alphabet group. Y'all know what that is. The ones that carry on the rainbow flag, which is the most high actual symbol, his covenant, that he wouldn't destroy the earth by water again, right? But y'all turn it into something wicked, right? Right, so you got something called uh, NAMLA, which means North American Man-Boy Love Association. Meaning what? They're after your children. They're after the little ones. But they said a grown man can have relationships with a little child, right? This is what you call confusion. Babylon is the place of great confusion. Give me the book of Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 22. So we live in Babylon, where you, a man can be with a man, a woman can be with a woman, a man that was born a man can turn into a woman and he can get pregnant, and then that woman that's actually a, a, a biological woman can have that man's child, right? Which is straight confusion, right? It's a tongue twister. Read that. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 22. Thou shalt not lie with mankind, as with mankind, as with womankind. It is an abomination. You see that? It's an abomination for you to be sticking your rod into another man, right? Or to, for two women to be scissoring one another. That's what you call an abomination, right? Give me the book of Romans chapter 1 and verse 24. That is an abomination, a nasty thing to do, right? The Most High says he didn't make that. He made a man and a woman. And a man and a woman are supposed to get together and they're supposed to procreate. Thus saith the Most High. Read that. Romans chapter 1 verse 24. Wherefore the Most High also gave them up to uncleanness. So the Most High gave you sodomites, the one that love men and men, and women and women, up to... Are you a sodomite, brother? You gotta come out of that. You gotta come out of that, brother. Read that through the lust of their own hearts, through the sight of their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie. So it says, who changed the truth of the Most High into a lie? Who confused you? Satan is the one that confused you. Why? Because we're living in Babylon the Great. So brother, you gotta come out of there. Or read on down to verse 28. Verse 28. Change the truth of the Most High into a lie and worship and serve the creatures more than the Creator who is blessed forever. For this cause the Most High gave them up unto a vile affection. So the Most High is giving you up to your own vile affections, right? Because you're not keeping the commandments. Once you stop, you start keeping the commandments, that is a way, that's your defense. That's a way to fight. Hold that, brother. Give me the book of uh, St. Luke, chapter 22, and verse 31, real quick. St. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31. We're going to come right back to the Lord. So the Most High. The Most High gave you up to your foul affection. Brother, you got to come out of that homosexuality, brother. Read that. Luke chapter 22, verse 31. And the Most High said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you. So Satan has desired to have the Israelites. He has the desire to have you, brother. That's why you got to come out of that. You must come out of that wickedness. You must come out of that confusion. A man is supposed to be with a woman. A woman with a man. That's why this place is called Mystery Babylon, or Babylon the Great, because you don't know where you're supposed to put your sexual parts at. Something so simple. If it wasn't for your father, you wouldn't be here, right? Not at all. Go back to Romans chapter one and verse uh, 26, right? So we must come out of that in these last days. Hey, listen to this, brother, with the grill. Hey, brother, with the grill. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. For this cause, the Most High gave them up into bond affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. You see that? Even the women. That's talking about being a lesbian. Less folks. The, being a, a tall ass Amazonian woman that wants to throw another woman up on top of you and y'all start doing the huckle book. That's what that's talking about. A woman lying with a woman, right? 
bumping your vaginas together until they catch on fire. Right? You know that's true, brother. <laughs> Give me a rebirth. Read that again, brother. Romans chapter 1, verse 26. For this cause, the Most High gave them up into all affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Confusion. Read on. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman. Leaving the natural use of the woman. That's confusion with, with a man on top of a man. That is confusion. Babylon the Great has, has confused you. It sold you, it made it, actually give me the book of, um, give me the book of uh, Psalms chapter 94 verse 20. Babylon says it's a law that you can marry the same sex. And let's see, let's see what the Bible says about that. Uh, Psalms chapter 94 verse 20. Psalm chapter 94 verse 20. Shall the blood of iniquity have fellowship with thee, which frameth mischief by law? You see that? Shall the throne of iniquity have fellowship with thee, that frameth iniquity by a law? They made it a law for same-sex couples to get married, which is confusion. The Bible spoke of this right here, right? The Bible spoke about pronouns. The Bible is talking about this. Go back to uh, Romans chapter 1 and verse uh, 27. So you see that? Everything is inside of the scriptures, right? What's your pronoun? What's your pronoun? Romans chapter 1 verse 27. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lusts, one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves a recompense of their error, which was me. And even as they did not like to retain the Most High in their knowledge, the Most High gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. You see that? The Most High gave you up to your own desire, your own rust, your own lust. And guess what? Two thirds of our people are going to be destroyed because they're giving up to their own lust. Give me the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse uh, 9. I'm going to read verse 9 and verse 10. So you see that? This is confusion. Not knowing your sexuality, not knowing where your, uh, where your body parts are supposed to go is, is confusion. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9. Know ye not the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. So the unrighteous will not get the kingdom of the Most High. So two-thirds of y'all, two-thirds of the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans of the Israelites will not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. This is not why we're out here making a declaration that you return back to the Most High and come out of Babylon the Great. Read on. Know ye not that the unrighteousness shall not inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuser of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the Most High. Meaning you're not going to get it. I don't care how much you say sweet Jesus. You're not going to get it. Right? I don't care how much you go inside the church and you pay a $31 fee. You're not going to get the kingdom of the Most High because you must stop doing these things. Come out of Babylon. Come out of America, right? Give me a uh, Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, and verse, we're gonna read verse 26 and verse 27. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 26 and verse 27. Because again, we're talking about your sexuality, right? Who you should be laying with. This is simple ABCs, one, two, three, that we should know as a people, but we don't know. We have been brain polluted. Read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 27. For the worship, verse 26, disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns, defiling of souls, changing of kind, changing of kind, meaning little uh, Zion way can now become Zion way, right? Uh, what's uh, Magic Johnson's son, EJ, now can become um, Erica, right? Changing of kind. Babylon says you can change your gender, right? In the U.S. military, you know, you can actually, uh, you tax, you taxpaying citizens are actually paying for sex changes. 
In the prison system, you taxpaying citizens are paying for sex changes, right? So changing of kinds. Is that it on that? Oh, or the worshiping of idols not to be named in the beginning, the cause and the end of all evil. You see that? That's the end of all evils, right? So now, we didn't talk about gender. We didn't talk about sexuality. Let's see who we should be marrying because that is another um, confusion that the so-called Israelites we deal with, right? Give me the book of Tobit, chapter 4 and verse 12. Because for some reason, the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American men and women don't know who they should be marrying in these days. Because we need to come out of Babylon, come out of this state of confusion, and listen to the laws. Read that. Tobit, chapter 4, verse 12. Beware of, of all whoredom, my son. So it says, beware of all whoredom. So we're about to find out what whoredom is, right? And chief will take a wife of the seed of thy father. So you Israelites need to take chiefly take a wife of the of your of your the tribe, but of at least of the other Israelites. Israelite women. That's who you should be look, uh, looking for, right? It should be no jungle fever. I remember that song back in the day. He's got jungle fever. She's got jungle fever. We're in love. Y'all remember that? Read that again from the top, brother. Where all horde of my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. Uh, shout out to Priest Kahan of uh, Ebony and Ivory. Right? Read that again. Beware of all horde of my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. Are you with that man? Read that again. Listen to this, right on top. Beware of all horde of my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. So we're supposed, that's confusion right now. That Babylon, the, okay, let me show you this. Do you know about a hundred years ago, that man would have had you as a slave? Oh my God. Think about that, sister. Do you know that? Listen to the words of the Bible. Do you believe in the Most High? Well, we're reading from the Bible. The Bible, no, no, no. Do you read, do you believe in the Bible? Give me the book of Ezra chapter 10 and verse 10. Because again, this is confusion. A hundred years ago, that man would have owned you. Now you're dating your oppressor, right? Because it's confusion, confusion, right? Give me that. Ezra chapter 10 and verse 10. Yeah, Ezra, I'll tell you. 